welcome to Alyssa Jean's Reviews. Welcome to my review of Star Wars Ahsoka Season 1, Episode 5, Shadow Warrior, or Part 5, I guess they call it. Uh, this video will be full of spoilers if you have not seen up through the end of this episode, but that should go without saying. Let's go ahead and uh, jump into it. So, this is one I really had to sit with. Before I could talk about it, uh, I had to watch it twice, uh, and I didn't watch a ton of other uh, opinions on it yet. There aren't a ton out there yet, uh, but uh, I watched a couple other videos to get other people's interpretations of it to let it sit with me <laughs> a little bit, uh, mainly because like I'm not sure what was really happening or what the point is supposed to be. Um, so I'm just kind of having to let it uh, sit with me. And I probably will have to continue to do that um, with this episode. Um, but uh, my feeling of it overall is very positive. Uh, I come away feeling like this was a very beautiful episode in a lot of ways. Even if I don't, still don't, I haven't still fully processed the crux of the episode, the whole Ahsoka and... Uh, Anakin stuff yet, but the ending was quite beautiful. I thought uh, with the Purgles and just how Ahsoka was kind of at peace and the smile that she had, uh, I thought that was quite lovely. And there's a lot of really lovely scenes uh, throughout this episode that I'll get into uh, as I go through this review. Um, but um, so overall, I. I I come away positive. I think that I probably still need to process it more to, before I can fully <laughs> comprehend this episode, but I'll, I'll try my best to give, like, my, uh, uh, my interpretation now <laughs> after, um, not having sat with it for a while. Um, I would still say if, you're, if we're ranking episodes, uh, episode four is still the best one of the season for me, um, but this one was uh, very impactful in a lot of ways, even if I still haven't fully processed it, and uh, I come away feeling very positive on it overall. Um, so we start with Hera and, and Jason go into the planet and Chopper, and uh, I was kind of wondering how they were going to fit into all this. Um, and they're searching for... Ahsoka and Sabine to start with. There's this really sad scene with Hu Yang like sitting there holding Sabine's helmet. They never listen to me. Oh, poor Hu Yang. And, and um, what I like about all this is that um, Jason, I like how they're playing up his force sensitivity. Um, he is the son of uh, Kanan Jarrus, as Hu Yang does point out. We didn't need that pointed out to us, but um, it is pointed out, and um, I do like how they're playing up that. I wonder if he ends up going to Luke's school. <laughs> he probably does. Uh, maybe he ends up uh, fighting against Kylo Ren. Maybe Kylo Ren kills him. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> speculation. Um, there is a, a moment where... Uh, Hera is and Carson are going back and forth. And Carson's like, "We gotta do something about this." Blah 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 blah. And Jason is like, "Mom." And at first she's like, "Later, Jason." But he's like, "Mom, no, listen to the ocean." And I loved how she takes a time out and actually goes and listens to him. She's actually a good mom. Uh, so many times on TV shows and movies, it's always like the parent going, oh, go away, you stupid kid, shut up. The adults are doing important stuff here and just completely miss out on the wisdom that the kid had to share. I am so tired of that trope. So I'm glad that Hera is like an actual good mom and actually does go and listen to her son because I think she is well aware that uh, he has inherited something special from Kanan and so I think that she uh, wants to encourage that and she's going to listen to that uh, and this was the first really beautiful scene in the episode uh, where they're sitting there and he's like do you hear it and she's like what waves she's like no 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 lightsabers and you can we, the audience, then, can kind of 
subtly hear the lightsabers of Ahsoka and Anakin uh, mixed in with the waves, and they play that music! And, um, you know, there are times where they can overdo the nostalgia, overdo the original music, but this was, like, perfect fit for this scene. I'm glad they played that music in that scene. And that was a very heartfelt scene, very touching scene for me. And it also reveals, now I'm going to switch gears over to the Anakin and Ahsoka stuff, that uh, this is not just a dream. I actually had heard a leak. I, uh, Star Wars Mag every week before, <laughs> the day before, she releases a video that, that talks about leaks, and I gotta stop watching them. <laughs> but, um, but I heard a leak that um, she wasn't really in the world between worlds, that this was just a dream. But I don't think that that's necessarily the case. Like, well, it's definitely not just a dream if... If um, Jace and Hera, by the way, are able to hear the lightsabers, it's definitely not just a dream. Um, but what it exactly it is, I don't know if we'll ever get an explanation for it. Um, my explanation for it right now is something, force, something, something, force. Like, it's, some, it's something to do with the force. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I know. She was in some weird force something, something, and... <laughs> I don't know if that was actually even the world between worlds or a manifestation. Um, was that Anakin or was that just some other manifestation of the Force? I tend to think that it was Anakin's Force ghost. Um, because we do know it's real. It wasn't just a dream. This has been confirmed because Jace can hear the lightsabers. So it was something um, which makes me gotta believe that uh, that was Anakin's Force Ghost, especially how he kept going back and forth to Darth Vader. I think that that was for real. Now, getting into the Anakin and, and Ahsoka of it all, first of all, just with the scenes of the Clone Wars and the young actress playing Ahsoka, all of that was fabulous. The young actress that they got to play Ahsoka was amazing. I was worried they were going to do the thing where uh, they have the adult actress playing the child character, and he, all the people around them see them as a child, but we, the audience, see them as an adult, um, which I saw very recently in Wheel of Time. Um, Star Trek did it in, in its episode, uh, next, the Next Generation episode, Tapestry, where Picard was supposed to be a young man, but we still see Patrick Stewart. Uh, it's th a thing that's been done again and again and again, and a lot of times it works. Like in that Tapestry episode, it worked very well. Um, but here, since we saw young Ahsoka for many seasons on The Clone Wars, if they had had Rosario Dawson just playing her, it would have been disappointing. Um, so I'm glad they got this excellent young actress to play young Ahsoka, and the aesthetics of it and everything was just really good. It took, took took me right back to The Clone Wars. In fact, uh, when they first show her, um, she falls down, and she's standing in this, like, mist... And she stands up gradually, and you see all these clones uh, running. Uh, the clone troopers are running through the mist. It looked like the Clone Wars animation for a hot second there. <laughs> it was, but it was live action. It was really good. Um, so I love the aesthetics of it. I love that we go back um, to the beginning of the Clone Wars. That must have been like a, a first season episode or the movie. I don't remember. She says it was one of the first missions they went on. I don't remember that specifically. Um, but then... They go to the uh, Siege of Mandalore, and she's fighting those Darth Maul Mandalorian people um, with the Darth Maul helmets. Um, that was very cool. So I, I did enjoy all of that. Now, as for the content of it, uh, so Ahsoka and Anakin are having a lot of conversations about uh, being a warrior and having to fight, uh, which I feel like are similar conversations that they had had throughout the Clo Clone Wars run. I'm like, aren't we Jedi? Are, are we supposed to be warriors? I think that that was brought up uh, a couple times throughout that show. I don't know that it was necessarily Ahsoka bringing it up, but uh, I do feel like that was a topic that came up <laughs> um, every once in a while. Um, and I was like... Struggling to find what the connection between that uh, and what Ahsoka is is going through, and um, 
Anakin keeps going back to you have a choice to live or die, and I kept taking that as um, she has a choice to just give up and die in the ocean, or uh, she has the choice to live and be rescued from the ocean and go forward. And um, at the end, she says, "I choose to live." And then she's re and then, well, first Anakin says, he says. Um, uh, there's hope for you yet right after she says i choose to live and then right after that she's rescued and she lives so uh it's portrayed as the struggle between whether um she's just gonna give up or die or she's going to to live um but i don't know i just didn't draw the connection to what that has to do with uh fighting and i don't want to be a warrior anymore um so are they saying that like being a warrior and fighting in war is good? Like, and was that what the point was? So that was where I was kind of struggling a little bit. Um, I did see a video. Uh, Jesse Gender had an interpretation um, that Ahsoka uh, was um, str struggling to give up. Or, or to like not follow in Anakin's footsteps, and that was what it was all about, uh, so that she doesn't have to be Darth Vader and <laughs> repeat what Anakin did. Um, and I could see that too, but I didn't see that that was ever built up to. I did hear some people mention last week that uh, Ahsoka definitely had a little bit of aggression, a little bit of dark side in her when she was fighting against Balin, where she lost her temper a couple times. Uh, especially when it came to protecting Sabine. And I could definitely see that, but I don't feel like the show really built up that Ahsoka is struggling with the dark side. So I don't know that that is what it was. Because <laughs> if it was, it was kind of out of nowhere. So I don't know. Um, so I don't know. It just felt pretty and, and beautiful. And like Ahsoka did this like thing that was character changing for her, but I can't quite wrap my brain around exactly what it is uh and uh really interesting to, to hear in the coming days other people's interpretations uh maybe in a, a week or two from now i'll be like oh this is what it is <laughs> but uh even after watching it twice i'm still like not quite sure how it all fits together but it feels nice <laughs> so um and of course, as I mentioned, the scenes were aesthetically pleasing uh, to watch. And it was great to see Hayden Christensen playing the uh, Clone Wars version of Anakin. Uh, I love that because the Clone Wars version of Anakin was so much better than uh, the the film version of Anakin. And I always blamed Hayden Christensen. Um, now I've come to think that maybe I should be blaming George Lucas more <laughs> for his bad writing. Um, and Because Hayden Christensen... Um, really nailed it. He he really embodied not the movie version of Anakin, but the Clone Wars animated show version of Anakin, which he did not voice. Uh, so he embodied that. He did such a good job, and I really bought this uh, Anakin and Ahsoka relationship just as it was in the Clone Wars. Um, so I absolutely loved all of that. Um, and then, uh, in the end, we get the scene where Ahsoka, uh, is trying to, um, hook up with the Purgle, and that's how they're gonna find Ezra, and of course that's how they're gonna find Ezra. I guess I thought that Ahsoka was gonna go from the world between worlds and go through a gate and get to Ezra, um, but this is better. Um, and so... Uh, I love how she, and they make it out like, oh, she's communicating with them. And then he he is like, well, are you sure that we're going to the right place? She's like, I have no idea. <laughs> Let's just go. Uh, it's better than going nowhere at all. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, she has this smile and this contentness about her. So whatever it is she went through with Anakin or whoever that actually was, I tend to think is Anakin, um, that brought her to a sense of peace. And I think this is going to lead her to being uh, a better master to Sabine. I don't th think she's going to be mad at Sabine. I think she's probably blaming herself a little bit. That's what I predict uh, for um, 
not giving proper guidance to Sabine, which led her to the decision that uh, she made. Because there is a, a an exchange of dialogue between Ahsoka and Anakin about uh, her having her own Padawan. Um, so I think that will all tie together. But anyway, so the Purgle, um, Ahsoka just has this contentness. This all felt very Star Wars. And even, you know, they threw in a little of the Star Wars lines, you know, like, I'll find them. I promise that the I promise, like Luke said to <laughs> to Yoda, I'll come back. I promise. Uh, so that just felt very Star Warsy. And uh, Hera says, "May the Force be with you." I wouldn't have minded classic Star Wars music here. They didn't. They didn't. Uh, I wouldn't have minded. I don't know if that same one would have fit. Do, 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 do. Probably a different one, but. <laughs> um, I wouldn't mind doing that there, but because it just felt very Star Wars-y, and um, you can feel that that Ahsoka has now reached, reached this place of contentment, and I found it to be very beautiful. Uh, so the scene where they take off with the the Pergo uh, was very beautiful. Um, we'll see what happens with Hera and Carson and all them. So a lot of people on YouTube are saying that this takes place before the Mandalorian season three, because, and I think they might be basing this only off of the fact that, um, Morgan was captured in Mandalorian season two, and she's only now in prison at the beginning of this season. So they're assuming it followed up pretty closely after that. Or I don't know if someone officially said Dave Filoni officially said that this is before Mandalorian season three, maybe they did. Um, but, if they're just basing it off of that, I think it could have been several months that she was in prison before they transported her. I don't know. <laughs> I was just like, I don't know that this is necessarily before Mandalorian Season 3. But if it is, then we know Carson's going to be just fine. <laughs> um, and then this is before the Book of Boba Fett, even. Uh, so that we know Ahsoka's going to be just fine. I don't know if that's true, but that's what everyone's saying. Um, anyways... Um, that does it for my review, so let me go ahead and give my rating out of 10. This was a hard one because I had to really sit with it. Um, so my rating out of 10, uh, with 1 being the lowest possible score, 10 being the highest possible score, is a whoa, whoa, I almost said 1 because I was saying 1 is the lowest possible score. No, no, not a 1. <laughs> it's, uh, I was getting tongue-tied there. It's a 9! It is a 9. Um... Not quite a, a, a 10. I, I just still think episode 4 to me is the best of the season. Um, and this one, Maybe this one will get there as I process it over time. It's very beautiful in a lot of ways. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead for now and give this a 9. Uh, and this is still an excellent series. This is still the best Star Wars live action series, bar none. Blows Andor out of the water. I'm sorry, Andor fans, but the, in my opinion, I still believe that show is vastly overrated. Uh, should have been uh, six to eight episodes. There were so many excessive characters and storylines. Um, and so this, to me, is the best Star Wars show and continues to be live action Star Wars show. Um, and we got three episodes left that I'm very excited about seeing. All right, everyone, uh, go ahead and join me next week. Subscribe if you have not already. Join me for my Star Trek Lower Decks reviews as well, and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Oh, hey, actually, I'm back. Before I really, really go, I thought of one thing that I completely forgot to mention, and I really want to mention it. The little Easter egg for Senator Organa, uh, which has to be Princess Leia because her father is dead at this point. And uh, so Princess Leia, we now know, has followed her father's footsteps in uh, becoming a senator. Her adopted father and also her birth mother, Padme, also was a senator. Uh, so that makes total sense. And she is a senator who is uh, kind of sticking up for Hera and covering for Hera. So I'm wondering what kind of relationship they had off screen. I can't remember if they ever actually had much interaction on screen. Uh, Leia was in one episode of Rebels, but my recollection was she mostly interacted with Ezra. I don't remember if she interacted with uh, with um, Hera, um, but maybe a lot of that happened off screen. But apparently she's covering for Hera, uh, which is interesting. Uh, we do know that Princess Leia herself would kind of go against the New Republic and start the resistance against the First Order, but that happened a little later. Anyways, just had to mention that because I, I completely forgot about it. 
So uh, that's it for real. Goodbye for real. I will see you soon for real.